support to Governor Katie Hoko. All Bengali community get out and they are going to vote tomorrow. And our brother, most of the Bengali brothers here, uh, please guys, come. Uh, Downtown Buffalo is address is 107 Delaware Avenue. Uh, within 30 minutes, our governor Kathy Hakko will be here. On behalf of Buffalo Bangladeshi Democratic Club, we have a lot of brothers also being in. So I want the rest of them just came in quick and we're going to start our party very soon. So I'm going to give the microphone uh, uh, to the brother back.
before you leave, we need you to hit those tables and sign up for a shift tomorrow to help volunteer for us. It's going to be closing strong like we know our friend Kathy Hogan does that's going to bring this election home for us. We've got to have your help in the next 24 hours. Polls open at 6 a.m. Our Board of Elections staff, many of them here, let's hear it for those elections.
He's endured attacks from the lunatic fringe who think that mandating masks and vaccine is the act of a tyrant instead of someone who has kept us safe and has saved countless lives in our county. I've been at his side in one way or another since 2004, and I'll be at his side for as long as he needs me to be there. I suspect after tomorrow we're going to have a conversation about the future. But I want you to give it up for our friend, our extraordinary leader of our community, our colleague, Senator Mark
Go ask the people in Central New York about the impact that the Micron investment is going to have with tens of thousands of jobs that are going to be giving us a little more than maybe other areas of the state. But I saw what prior governors did. I used to get the grant things that when we win grants and say, oh, that's nice. We've got a lot of assistance from Governor Hochul because she understands what we need. And that's not talking about what she and I did together. It was to secure the Buffalo Bills for another 30 years.
See, but half the night, get back in her car, and do it all over again. She never stops going back and forth across the state. She smiles. She's polite. Oh, but underestimate her at your peril because she is tough. She has steel in her spine, and she is like a lot of tough.
experience. I've seen her work day in and day out to deliver record level of funding at every level. Record level of funding for education. Record level of funding for infrastructure. Record level of funding for health care, for child care, for organized life, for everything that we care about as working families in our community, as blue collar workers across New York State. Governor Hochul has risen to the occasion. She has a
So don't 
don't just go to the polls yourself. Take a family member, take a friend, take a co-worker, take a church member. Let's make sure that tomorrow we turn out in record numbers to elect our
spending more than any governor in the history of New York on good, modern policing and effective and fair law enforcement and crime prevention. In speaking of crime prevention in city communities, we need to listen to this. Governor Hochul's opponent in a dramatic campaign conversion the New York Times article three weeks ago, said he now believes President Biden's win was legitimate and sought to minimize his role in trying to overturn the election. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be very clear. I was there. I voted to certify the fairest, most transparent presidential election in American history. in a flip-flop to rival all flip-flops. Lee Zeldin joined 146 other Republicans in the House seeking to overthrow the victory in key states, the Biden victory in key states. Text messages and other relevant evidence shows that Lee Zeldin was a key player in the attempt to overthrow the election and our democracy on January 6, 2021. Let's talk about that pro-police thing that he's been yapping about for weeks. On January 6th, 138 Capitol Police officers were severely injured. Four dead on or because of the trauma of that day. You can't be pro-police when you support a guy who turned an armed insurrection on the police. On the one side were those defending the Capitol. Those defending the Capitol Police. That's the side Governor Kathy Hochul has always been on. The other side there were those supporting the violent insurrection, the attack on the Capitol, and the police to protect the Capitol. The choice is clear, compelling, and complete. Kathy Hochul is a happy warrior. The 19th century poet Lawrence Martin wrote about. She is a public servant who is undaunted, unafraid, and cheerful even in the face of great person. She is brave always in uncertain and perilous times, clear in her thinking and her vision. She is a light out of the darkness. She is happy in the fight because it is a good fight. A good fight for her home state and for her people of that state. She's a daughter and granddaughter of steel workers. She's a wife, a mom, a grandmother. She's tough as hell and she's our daughter. In this stormy place, in this beautiful room, in this beautiful city with these wonderful people. We need to deliver a victory for Kathy Hochul. There are 134,000 more Democrats in Arizona than there are Republicans. The cavalry cannot stay at home. Kathy Hochul is facing up to a very, very stiff challenge. Not because of her, she has every gift that she would want from elected officials. But the money's coming in from the outside, from the inside, and from the dark side. They're trying to vilify her in a way that I believe is impossible. But none of that will matter unless this community, the community that she loves, more so than anything else, the community that she has served as admirably as anybody else, comes out and delivers a victory for her. She is our hometown girl. She's our friend. She is our colleague in government. She is a good person from a good family, doing an outstanding job in the most difficult of circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you our current and our next governor, New York State, the Honorable Kathy Hitchcock.
stand before you and have heard the voices of so many great leaders talk about what we've done. And I'm grateful to them, I'm grateful for their service, and I'm grateful for the Democratic Party of Erie County. in Chicago, they heard about this place, a promised land, 
with our jobs making steel, we can live the American dream, write your family off. And that place was Buffalo. in that neighborhood because I never forgot where I came from. My family started there, but also the other influences on me. I was raised in what we called a social justice Catholic family. We didn't have a lot, but we often trekked into the city of Buffalo, my parents trying to live the teachings of Christ in their talk, and to visit the poor, go to the parachute projects. My mom helped start a center on the side of Buffalo. Helping lift people up, giving them a chance. We always were taking food and clothing to people. My parents helped start Haven House. We helped people in tough circumstances. My story began here with that sense of service to others. And that's in my DNA as it is in all of yours. That's why you're part of the Democratic Party, because you believe in those values of living. We always come back. I'm so blessed to live in a home sometimes, not a very often because of executive residence in Albany. Franklin Roosevelt once lived there. He had overcome so much with his own disabilities and trying to govern a state at a time when there's a crash in 29. He was still the governor of New York at the time. So I'm inspired by him, but I also know that that New Deal that changed America during its toughest, darkest days, the Great Depression, started when he was governor of New York. The policies, the thought that we could, government could be a, a vehicle to lift people out of their circumstances, give people good paying jobs and security so their families don't have to live in poverty and education. All these investments that we believe in as Democrats started back then from a governor. And I want you to know, I know these stories and these influences because that's what I'm prepared to do for all of you. We've worked hard for 14 months, but I know with a four-year term and the opportunity to help us turn the page on this global pandemic and the inflation and all the stress that he brought under, people will look back at our time, just as we look back at FDR's time and say, how did they do that? It was the power of the people believing in the same values. across the street, I say this, you may not know me, but I know you. I've been there for eight years as Lieutenant Governor. I've worked there for years working so hard for all of you, visiting places. And you know the Lieutenant Governor doesn't get headlines when she shows up? That's all right. I wasn't looking for headlines. I was just making their connection with people, letting them know they matter. And I wanted this community to know what I saw this community do after May 14th, to talk about it earlier. It's hard to think about it again. But this community went to what we call a stress test. But what would happen with outside forces who didn't agitate when we see people trying to disrupt us and we try to heal ourselves after that massacre? And what I saw from the elected leaders you just heard from, there should be a book written about this. This was courage. This was a community coming together. This was a community saying no more. And we went back to Albany with Crystal People's Strokes.
didn't so we didn't do, we did them. And now, that's why it's so, so it's incredible that I'm running against an opponent. You heard the whole lit, you don't have to go again, you did a brilliant job, too. You think? <laughs> It to be scared of too. <laughs> but instead of uniting people, my opponent Lee Zell is working so hard to keep people scared. And I'm working so hard to keep people safe. That's the way it is. about the historic significance of being the first woman governor. But I, 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 I didn't come to make history. I didn't come here to make history. I came here to make a difference. And my journey as governor concludes it will not be this week. Every child, every teenager, every person born, even people like my new grandbaby, Sophia, little baby, I want them to know there are no barriers to them anymore. The work that you've been doing, the tireless work, the reaching everybody, pulling them out, saying this vote matters. It matters. And I'm so grateful, so grateful for that effort. It is humbling for a daughter of Buffalo to be a governor of New York. Thank you.